Oh boy, this is Dave Meltzer here with Entrepreneurs the Playbook. And I have, I just have to say, I know the Lakers are going to go crazy. The CEO of my favorite basketball team of all time, the one I grew up with, we were just talking about a guy named Bingo Bobby Smith, Len Komorowski. He is the CEO of the Cleveland Cavaliers and of course, Mortgage Rocket Fieldhouse with both of our friends, Jeff Marks, CEO of Innovative Partnerships Group. Welcome gentlemen to the playbook. Hey, David, great to be here. Thanks for having us. And uh, we'll be breaking out the Swensons here soon, soon for you. So here we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love you both. That'd be phenomenal. Well, you know, I was telling you earlier that I was so excited to have you on uh, because a lot of times I'm talking out of my ass, excuse my language, with people that know a lot about crypto or wine or, you know, something that I'm really not an expert in. So I know the right questions to ask because I'm curious and I love to learn. But Finally, I have two executive legends with me that we can actually discuss something that I know, how to create revenue with the emotional aspect of sports. You know, I would call it the bug light approach. Uh, you may not define it the same way, but the Cavs and Innovative, you guys are in the bug light business. How do we use sports to attract people, to make money, help people and have fun? And it's the only business that I know that carries those three components of my mission statement when you have sports, you should be able to help people make a lot of money and have a lot of fun. So I'm going to start, you know, with you, Len, if you want mine, you know, how do you see the calves either aligned with that mission or where does it diverge from that mission today? No, I mean, it's absolutely all about that mission. And uh, that's the beauty of uh, the world that we get to play in that, you know, Jeff and I are in and that we're bringing together great brands with great uh, entities all over. and really looking at it from a way that how do we create a platform for them to do business in a way that has an impact, but also is, is fun. So, uh, and I think the one thing with David, I, you know, I, Jeff is uh, a friend. I got to know Jeff uh, just South of where you were born down in Canton. There's that uh, thing we call the hall of fame, the pro football hall of fame and the pro football hall of fame village. And, uh, we uh, Jeff uh, and his team put together a unbelievable partnership with uh, Johnson Controls in that realm that really epitomizes that. And you know, I was excited to have an opportunity to join Jeff's board uh, as well because uh, you know uh, Jeff and his team are. We, I, I always like to say we always looked at uh, things very similarly in terms of the space and how to optimize it. And uh, I think you know Jeff and what he does is uh, at the highest levels of many of the different groups out there in the industry, they're the absolute best. And now I know why Jeff, you get all my emails is, you know, as Warren Moon, my business partner took over from Merlin Olson, uh, back when Steve Perry, before, you know, Wreck-It Ralph himself, or should I call him Rocket Ralph for you guys, uh, took over David Baker, um, you know, working with the Hall of Fame for years, coming from Akron, marketing with uh, David and of course, George Varis. Uh, there's nothing more dear to my heart than the growth and acceleration, especially with the Johnson Control deal that you've been able to do. It's going to transform all of Canton, let alone it probably drip over into Akron as well. Um, for you, uh, Jeff, when you met Len, you know, and with what you're doing even beyond the Hall of Fame, how did you see that relationship evolving? Because I think a lot of people, when they start getting involved with the, you know, one of the top 32 teams, they start sitting uh, and looking at things a little bit differently. Did you take a business and marketing aspect or was it personal? How did this relationship, you know, what stimulated you to develop a relationship with Len? Uh, it's a great question. And actually, Len, I don't even know if you and I have ever even talked about this. So this will be fun. Uh, to uh, share, well, you know, Len's a legend in, in the sports business industry. You look across what he's done, in NBA, we did an NFL at the Eagles, and then, you know, one of the longest standing executive roles with a franchise that's one in not a major market. So, you know, uh, what, what he's done uh, outshines everyone. But I'll tell you the common theme and thread was a three uh, word statement, COI, contractually obligated income. And there's very few in our industry that know COI, that know how to generate COI, but David, COI, contractually obligated income, is the holy grail of our industry. Everyone else sells sponsorships and short-term deals, but when you do a long-term deal, a naming rights, a big founding partner, a B2B partnership, what you're able to do with COI then 
is take that income stream and monetize it. You can finance it. You can factor it. You can go to across the street to Goldman Sachs and say, hey, Goldman Sachs, can you give me the net present value of this deal? So a lot of times people think of us as the investment bankers in the marketing world, because what we're doing is we're doing very difficult long-term deals that we then can get financed and then great things can happen for owners that they can build upon. So uh, the funny thing is when Len and I got reunited years ago in Canton, Ohio, uh, I remember I was claiming category exclusivity and Len was telling these guys, who's this guy from LA? He doesn't know anything about sponsorship. We don't need to do category exclusivity. And we started, you know, kind of jawing back and forth. And then at the end, we're like, you know what? We actually agree exactly on how it should be. So I don't know, Len, if you remember that or not. No, no, I abs absolutely. <laughs> we were, in fact, we were sitting there with uh, David Baker in that, uh, you know, around that football table, whatever that was, uh, co football coffee table. So that was, uh, that was fun. But, but you know, at, at, you know, spot on. Uh, David, so what, what Jeff is saying about COI, it is remarkable in our industry how few really grasp that concept. But you think about a you think about a business, right? If you're in a if you're in a business and you are totally regenerating your revenue year over year, the amount of work just to renew that goes into that, it, it really doesn't create a sustainable platform. But with COI. And I'll admit, so when I was with the Eagles, so we, we were building uh, Lincoln Financial Field. And uh, we uh, uh, were, were the first team to do uh, a billion in COI back when a billion was a big number <laughs> so, but the, uh, in pro sports. But with that, we had a consortium of banks. And so I would get pulled into these meetings. And that's all they wanted to know about is how we were performing on, on the COI because of the, you know, the, the private investment that Jeffrey Laurie had on the team, you know, with that. And as Jeff said, it's really, it's financeable, but, and, and able to be monetized. But the other huge thing about it from a, a, a franchise perspective or a venue or entity perspective is it creates a platform for you to build your business because you have that COI, you know, locked up. And now you have a baseline to keep building on incrementally year over year. And it also gives you a purview to be able to renew that. So you, you can do it in a position of strength. So figure a team's going for a championship run or there's something of that nature where it creates a, a favorable environment to keep extending that out. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, really very powerful. And the one uh, note I'll just make that really epitomizes this, I, I can't tell you how many times We've seen over and over again in our industry where you'll have a team, they'll launch a brand new arena, stadium, ballpark, whatever it is, venue, you name it. And they, they have, don't have that strategy. What ends up happening, there's usually a catalyst event associated with opening or reopening or a major renovation of a venue, right? In terms of the excitement around that. And if they don't effectively monetize that from a COI end, you'll see their revenues start to regress back to the, the mean of where it was previously. They've lost a lot of the benefit of the major investment they've made in the first place, but uh, it, it is really a point of differentiation. Uh, that's where, you know, Jeff, in addition to being a great guy and family man and everything else, uh, but, you know, he was someone who just, I know you talked about wine, you know, the topics of wine. So having a, you know, it'd be great to have a cap, just be able to have a Cabernet with Jeff and talk about COI. We could probably go on for a few hours. I, I know we will because we do. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the other aspect is I've learned about it uh, out here on the West Coast is the tax uh, benefits as well as far as asset-based lending and tax-free uh, income that can actually be derived from having an asset with COI and the strategy and the tax benefits that can also, you know, hugely, especially in California and New York, uh, create substantial leverage uh, when you're trying to expand, grow, or go for a playoff run. And, you know, you can see the Dodgers uh, utilizing every aspect to steal Scherzer from my Padres and end up in the playoffs. Hopefully they'll lose, though. But I, I digress. Um, in, well, it's, also... it's interesting you said that, though, David, because COI actually came out of, you know, when all these new naming rights and new products wrapping 20 years ago, there's a lot of public financing. And then what ended up happening, starting in, in your state, California, and then moving, in other words, is public financing dried up, but that but owners still needed new venues and new sports districts. So that's kind of another area where we came in and said, we filled that gap 
So now you've got debt, you have equity, and you have Innovative Partnerships Group doing COI, and it helps you on your capital stack. Yeah. And, you know, I was reading about the partnership intelligence system as well, trying to gather information and have it where I could somehow articulate uh, to others. So I was wondering if you could explain the partnership intelligence system as well and why it's the new buzz that I keep reading about. Yeah, sure. Let me take it, Landon, and you can, I'll let you yeah. in. First of all, we'll get you the, the the cool explainer video. The new one's coming out next week, so uh, I'm good with video. That's perfect. It, it, was, it was pretty good. We, we've we've used the the existing one for about three years now. We figured it was time to update it. So what we ended up doing when we started Innovative Partnerships Group uh, a little less than five years ago was that we noticed that it, that in the marketplace you had a lot of other mediums that you could measure. You can measure TV. You can measure radio. You can measure digital. You can measure social. You can measure print, you can measure out of home. But when it came to sponsorships, there was still that gut feel like, God, I think it works or my CEO might like the team. Um, I know that I'm getting business, but the, no, there was no tool out there that could really measure it. And it was because the world was looking at sponsorship like every other medium, TV, radio, digital, social, out of home, print and sponsorship. Well, what we did with the partnership intelligence system is that we got very lucky. First of all, one of our, our advisors, uh, John Vane, he was the founder of Market Share Partners. It sold it to New Star. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of technology went into this. And to make a long story short, it's a media mixed modeling tool. And what we ended up doing is saying, sponsorship has, David, TV, radio, digital, social, a lot of print inside of it. So by doing the partnership intelligence valuation, you get a media valuation or media equivalency. We then value programs and platforms. We then value the brand equity lift. If you're Coca-Cola and you're going to put yourself uh, with your Padres, well, Coca-Cola's brand equity doesn't lift as much if it's this up and coming cool energy drink in San Diego. So we have to value that brand equity transformation. And then lastly, we do a direct and indirect lifetime value of a customer model. So when you look at those four different valuations in one, that's why we call it partnership intelligence because we're not just saying how many eyeballs or CPMs or people visiting. That's not why brands buy anymore. And, and we kind of know the secret sauce. Well, that's awesome. Anything to add there, Lynn? Yeah, no, I, I would just say this is, again, this is another point of separation. It was a, you know, in getting to know Jeff and the team, having been in part of many different naming rights uh, and entitlement and, and different partnerships of that nature, foundation partnerships and the like, is you don't really have that type of holistic approach that's normally out there in the industry. It really is largely in, in many cases about, you know, drilling down more towards eyeballs or, or in terms of media value or the case of that nature. And, and really in, with Jeff and the team, having that holistic approach, having a process to it, right? A system, a process, something that's easily understandable. And then uh, also, really, really uh, drilling down as well on the B2B aspects of opportunities that are associated with these uh, major investments that are out there. And, and that's really, you know, really creates that point of separation um, because this, this is, I think the one thing just to take into account with a lot of these COI events, they're not every, in, in an organization's world, uh, if you look at people in my, my seat, typically they're not set up to optimize that because it doesn't happen, you know, every single day per se, when you're looking at uh, a new arena, a new venue, maybe some other, what I call like a COI, a major COI event. There's minor opportunities, but a major COI event. And they don't necessarily always have that uh, capacity or understanding, you know, with it. And where Jeff and the team can, uh, IPGs, I've seen it do better than anybody else. And there's, there's other players in the industry for sure is the ability to optimize that and unlock even more value than what traditionally would be out there. And the, the proof is in what you're seeing taking place in the marketplace, you know, whether it be Footprint Arena or otherwise, uh, by, you know, by really, again, unlocking that value through a much more holistic approach than what is traditionally the, the methodology. Yeah, that trend, I mean, naming rights alone in 2021, as we come into the fourth quarter, it's explosive. I mean, I haven't seen this many deals. Obviously, we had the Mortgage Rocket Fieldhouse, Footprint Center, which you mentioned for the Suns. Um, but that trend, what happened this year that created such an explosive number of deals in, in this space? 
That's really interesting uh, question. We, we, we've been getting that a lot lately. So I think a couple of things. One, one was coming out of COVID, uh, you're seeing a lot of new industry sectors, right? You're seeing FinTech, you're seeing crypto, you're seeing ESG. Uh, and what's happening is some of these companies that are flush with money, whether it's SPACs or IPOs, uh, they need to break out of the clutter and they need massive unaided brand awareness. And when you think about how much money brands put into, which we mentioned before, the traditional way, the TV, radio, digital, social, out of phone print, uh, the problem is you can't get massive unaided brand awareness fast enough. And so naming rights is sort of a kind of a quick built in, and then you can build around it. And I think you're seeing that, whether it's a venue, whether it's a jersey, whether it's a helmet, and there's a lot of new inventory also coming in the market, but um, we, yeah, we've never seen demand like this since the dot-com days. Uh, and, and one of the things that I specialize in, I created, I, I call it the Shakespearean revival in, sport, in sports. And what I mean by that is there's two things. One, to thine own self be true, that there, you know, we've been overusing the word authentic and organic, but there has to be a frequency to a franchise. Uh, and, and there is an energy or vibration and it should be unique. But moreover, the second part of the Shakespearean revival is you know, all three of us in the past, when we put our name on a stadium or on a jersey, there was only so much that it was amplified. See, what, what has occurred that nobody understands is I, you know, they, they featured me in American Way magazine. And I, and I was so bummed because it was COVID. And it was December and January. I'm thinking millions of flyers are going to see me. Total ego play. Like I finally made my bucket list. That was nothing compared to when I did a video about how bummed and egotistical I was about putting this article and I held up American Way Magazine. Well, take that times a million or a billion when you put SoFi or Mortgage Rocket or your footprint on a stadium where every day, I mean, literally millions of pictures and videos are going up with free exposure, amplification, credibility, emotional attachment, all the reasons that companies make more money. And then you have so many more companies and more industries available. I can't see any reason. Do you think that the market understands this stage theory that, that you know, I define as capture what's already done, modify it in a million different ways, amplify it, and it's also perpetual because everyone's Facebook now goes back to that sign up there because it was their favorite moment with their 11 year old and it's 10 years later because he's graduating college. Like, remember when we went to the playoff game? But guess what's behind me with my 4 million followers, right? The, the sign that somebody else paid for. That's right. I mean, David, that's a great, great, uh, great call out to all of that. So with Rocket Mortgage as an example, they're they advertise everywhere, right? They're ubiquitous with what they do, but with the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, so as an example here, we have coming up here very shortly, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And, uh, you know, Foo Fighters are gonna be introduced by Paul McCartney and you have, you know, all on and on and on, you know, Tina Turner, Carol, that's just a uh, Jay-Z, you name it, on that whole front. So that event, and then even in February, we have the 75th anniversary of the NBA this year, the All-Star Game, is going to be here in Cleveland, uh, just up the road from Akron. And uh, as far as that goes, but again, that that plays out to a billion people worldwide. And all those opportunities and the prospect of having the top 75 players represented here in Cleveland, Ohio, of NBA history and what that represents. So it, absolutely, it does uh, it does really build off of what you just uh, what stated. Now, I, I want to add one other thing too with what Jeff had uh, said, you know, said really well about uh, with the interest in naming rights and, and within our industry in general, but we have also just seen, an, uh, which is really bodes well for the future, that, that what we lost with COVID has really uh, has accentuated what we missed. And what I mean by that is the experiential aspect of our and social aspect of our world. And what we're seeing is an explosion of not only event activity, we're going to have a record number of concerts here this year, including Harry Styles right now, tonight. But, the, uh, but on, on top of that, um, you're just seeing, uh, we're seeing higher drop counts in terms of people coming. We're seeing records in per capita in terms of food and beverage. People want to get out. They want to engage. They want to be part of experience, uh, shared experiences. And that bodes well. And then I'll add another element here, which really has been one of the last elements that have had, had not been, uh, if you want to say, it fully evolved, but is really happening rapidly around our country, 
is sports betting. And sports betting before was relegated to you know, certain markets. Now you have uh, 26 states who have passed sports betting. Uh, many others are in process like we are in Ohio, which we hope to have done here even in the next month. But what that does is create a level of engagement, a fan engagement that is incredible. So you even take, because now I have an, uh, a level of engagement uh, from the full spectrum of, uh, of fan base out there, and, it, and it's been shown time and time again how that increases, increases my avidity, my connection to these teams, to these venues, to everything else of that nature. And, um, and so we're seeing that industry grow rapidly, but a great byproduct of that is the level of engagement now with sports that you know previously we hadn't even seen at these type of levels. So that's just gonna again, provide even yet another conduit of a platform for opportunity as it pertains to these naming rights, entitlements, other and, and other B2B part founding partners and B2B partnerships. That's awesome. And I was at uh, the Rolling Stones last night at uh, an incredible, as old, as much older gentleman, Mick Jagger, we'd be lucky if we had as much energy as that guy had today at 78. I mean, it was a miracle. I sat there with Sugar Ray Leonard last night, who's in his 60s, and we were both amazed at Mick Jagger. Um, last question real quick. You know, everything is changing so quickly, though. And obviously, people would blame the pandemic, but you and I both know with gambling, technology, esports, all the different digital formats and protections and licenses, NIL, the list goes on and on and on. I can't even look to three. People ask me, you know, what do we see for the future? I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, in a better time frame than most people probably. <laughs> what do you see in the first quarter of next year as far as change? Because I think that's a, mere, a more fair assessment that people can take advantage of in this space. Yeah, um, it's a great question, and, I, and you're right. I mean, who would have thought the crystal ball in 21 did what it did, right? Who would have even guessed that? Um, I think what we're going to see in 22, continuing to have these experiential opportunities, but I do believe digital is going to come back like nothing before as well, and you're going to start to see um, digital assets and the transformation of those where it's gonna be really hard. You know, right now in a bunch of the leagues, you've got your 75 mile radius where you can market and not market. And you're seeing other sports around the world and other leagues that don't have that. And I think you're going to start to see an explosive growth on how sports teams, leagues, properties in the United States really think through how to maximize value because they're not just competing with each other anymore. We're on a global uh, base for, uh, for revenue. And I think that 22 will start to bring some of that out. Beautiful. Len? Yeah, if I can uh, add to that, I think, uh, again, great question. Uh, I think what you're going to really start to see happening, and we're already, you're already hearing a lot about it, is about how uh, direct-to-consumer actually becomes even more ubiquitous uh, as a, a form of connectivity. And, you know, you're seeing platforms that have been launched, you know, ESPN+, Plus, others that have happened, and it's been remarkable, the overall transformation uh, you know, that's something that the leagues and teams are really delving into in a much more significant fashion. Uh, the great part about that as well is it goes back to you know, providing content on people's own terms and what they want to see when they want to see where they want to see it, and what device, whatever the case may be, where, you know, traditionally it's been a, a more of a relegated model. So uh, I think that has, again, incredibly positive benefits. Uh, for our industry as a whole, because our ability to connect with audiences in a, in a way where previously they've been frustrated because they couldn't get access to the product. Uh, but then to your point, David, that'll allow me to, if I'm on a business trip to India, whatever, I'll be able to have that full realm of connection to all my teams and my uh, entities that I follow. So uh, that, is, that is evolving here quickly, but it's, it's moving very, very fast. And I will say, as we finish up, one of the things that we didn't get to discuss with uh, both the Cavaliers, Morgan Rotsy Fieldhouse, of course, innovative partnerships, and I know both of your histories, is I see a very quick uh, healing with inclusion and equity. I, I feel as if all of this digital content, the way that it's worldwide connecting us through all the different sports, even micro sports, you know, there, there's so many cornhole has its own TV deal, you know, all it's doing is bringing us as sports has always done in entertainment, 
I saw it last night at the Rolling Stones concert, you know, is bringing us all together. And you two, you know, as much as we like to make money, help people and have fun, that equity and inclusion, I know, has been a really important part of all the business that you've done to bring communities together, uh, which before we're local to a stadium or arena. But as you just eloquently stated, it's going to be worldwide. So I want to tell you, thank you, obviously, on my mission uh, working with the Clementes and Warren Moon and Jackie Robinson uh, that, you know, here we are three middle aged white men, but we are working towards inclusion and equity through content that brings us all together. Len, Jeff, it's been an honor and a privilege. I cannot wait to see you guys in person and uh, share a nice uh, hamburger from Swenson's. We appreciate <laughs> everything you're doing. Uh, come back anytime and share your playbooks to success.